So this is, uh, I guess, day three of uh, the 10th Annual Creative Streams Workshop. And I want to welcome everybody online. We're streaming live on Google Plus, Hangouts, on air. Uh, from the Creative Stream Players community page on Google Plus. You can also watch all these streams all week this week, and they'll be archived later at my YouTube channel, Christian Howes Tube. You just go to YouTube look for the Christian Howes channel. You can find all the streaming events from this week's Creative Streams Workshop. Uh, for those of you today in our audience here physically, we've got um, about 22 of the youth in the program. How, how's it going so far? Are you having fun? Yeah. yeah. Great. Great. Um, our youth orchestra has been working with uh, incredible clinician Rob Anderson, Robert Anderson, uh, who founded String Project Los Angeles many years ago. And he's here again tonight. In fact, Robert Anderson and I, at 7 p.m. tonight, are going to be doing a, another streaming live presentation, all focused on gear, um, specifically gear for uh, Amplification for string players, um, effects processing, looping, stuff like that. So even for the kids that are here today, when you go home later tonight, if you want to see more, you can see us do a demonstration about loop pedals and effects and fun stuff. So like I said, uh, anybody that's here or anybody that's watching uh, streaming, um, please go ahead and tweet us. We've got a hashtag on Twitter. It's Creative Strings Workshop. Creative Strings Workshop. So go ahead and tweet about what's happening this week. Kids, you can talk about what's going on. Put it on Facebook. Um, put it on Google Plus. Again, look for the Creative String Players community on Google Plus. We also have the Creative String Players community on Facebook. You can join that community or even on LinkedIn, Creative String Players. So anyway, I want to introduce our next teaching artist, his name is Greg Byers. <clears throat> he's a cellist, he's a composer, he's a technology guru. He's going to show all kinds of cool things. He's doing a, basically a solo project with cello, interfacing with his laptop. He's got amazing things to show us. You can find him at Cello Greg. CelloGreg.com is a great place to find great buyers. Um, and he's ready to come out, so please welcome Greg Byers. We're only going to sing through that. You guys can hear me if I talk like this, right? Yep. Yeah. All right. How's everybody's day then? Good? Very Are you fun here at Christian Workshop? Yeah. Awesome. So I wanted to start off today and kind of raise the question of what is music in this day and age? What does it mean to play music? What does it mean to go to a, a performance of music, right? Because we think about 100 years ago, and you'd probably be in a concert hall, dressed very nicely, listening to pre-composed music. And you think about today, you think about today and um, it could be anything from that exact same setting to uh, going to a club and listening to a DJ play, and there's zero live instruments being performed for you. So there's a huge gamut or range of music that's being performed today. And that's part of what sort of launched this idea for this solo project called By Yourself. And so I'm just going to uh, start by playing a song. What I'd like you to uh, think about while I'm doing this is... Um, First of all, I want you to listen to what instruments you're hearing, um, because there's a bunch of different things going on, and everything on here I, I recorded myself, so I played every instrument. So I'm going to quiz you afterwards to see if you remember everything that went down. Also, going to make sure my screensaver doesn't turn on. Okay, good. Um, and then finally, I'd like to see um, what your thoughts are about what the song is about, what I wrote it about, what's the meaning of the song, right? Okay, so in the book. Lost my voice. 
office at the age of 23. Having not learned how to speak properly.
sure. So the, the last few lyrics are, I found my voice at the age of 25, having the courage to be alive. But how can I contain my voice when I still have to say everything? So it's about all the infinite possibilities of once you have the courage to state your mind, you can do whatever you want. So I'm going to try to fix this screensaver because I would like you to see what's going on with this program a little bit. Um, cool. So let me talk a little bit about how I arrived to doing this sort of thing. Because as I said, I was, I'm a classical cellist primarily. And um, I, I started playing. Um, I started playing my uh, bass when I was in um, the end of high school, um, and so I slowly was working with both of those instruments. And I first kind of wanted to do stuff with both of them. I wanted to be my bass player for my cello playing, and I, I kind of found a lot of limitations on that. I wasn't really comfortable with that, and it's very hard to make a cello a chordal instrument. Um, you can do it, but um, it's not my speciality. So um, I slowly kept playing cello, kept playing bass, and started discovering all the different musical um, elements that make up songs that we listen to on the radio today. Everything from what drums sound like, when you use piano and guitar, how vocals work together, um, and including how to use a program like this. And so I eventually learned of this program, and this is called Ableton Live. Ableton Live is a digital audio workstation. So what it allows me to do is take both um, audio sounds, like what I'm saying right now, as well, as well as digital information, so that's ones and zeros, and it interprets those ones and zeros as sound that comes out of the speaker. Um, there's a few different ones, but I like this one because it allows me a lot of flexibility in my live performance. So uh, one of the things when I, when I started to decide I wanted to use a computer, I was really fighting with myself in terms of why is it okay to use pre-recorded tracks? Why is that an acceptable thing? And we so often go to concerts where there's a lot of musicians on stage and everyone is playing a part that you're hearing and there's nothing pre-recorded. But um, I then compared it, like I said, to DJs and these sorts of things where no one, electronic artists, no one is actually playing a live instrument in front of you. And so I realized what was more important is to have a purpose for what you're recording and have a purpose for what you're doing live. The technology available through recorded music allows us to, um, in a sense, perfect any audio we put into it. Um, does everybody know what auto-tuned vocals sound like, <laughs> right? It sounds like the very sort of like T-Pain or like, I don't know, Rihanna. A lot of them, it, it's very clicky. The, the voice clicks around a lot, right? But it's always perfectly in tune. So we have the ability to make any pitch perfectly in tune. We have the ability to make any rhythm perfectly in rhythm. And that's a fancy word called quantize. Anybody, anybody hear that word before? Let's just all say it. It's a fun word. Ready? Quantize. All right, cool. So what that is, if I swap over here, if we think about music in a grid, right, because music is time-based, we can put all our notes in a grid. This is not what we were listening to before, but this is a drum track off of something I have. And you can see these little dots here, right? And all these dots tell the computer to make a sound at a certain time, and they're all in a specific grid. As I zoom in here, you can see they're all pretty close to specific lines. So with recorded information, or with, with recorded music, we can pretty much make anything sound perfect. And there's something nice about that, right? It's very safe, but it's not human. Human, the beauty of, of humanity is its imperfections, of, of trying to obtain the most perfect thing possible, but still having limitations. And that's why I sing for you. I don't think I'm the best singer, but I sing because I want to show you my passion. I want to present that to you in a live setting. And I want to um, give you that experience of truly the fact that I'm singing. Right? Same thing with my cello playing. Um, I use my cello playing as my main vehicle because I feel most comfortable with it, and I feel that it's um, the most accurate thing to portray the musical stories I'm telling. Okay, 
So one fun thing we can do uh, is we can talk about, um, I use uh, this little panel up here and my computer to be um, something close, akin to a pedal board for a guitarist. So guitarists usually have really big, big pedal boards and they have all these crazy sounds, right? All my crazy sounds are on this laptop. So I would like to volunteer. Yes, right there. Come on up. All right, you're going to help me create some really weird sounds with my cello. Does that sound all right? Yeah, okay. Stairs are right there. Come on up. So as you can see down here, right now I'm looking at this thing right here called my cello. Come on over. What's your name? Hayden. Excellent. Nice to meet you. I'm great. So come on over. Can you see the screen all right? Okay, so I'm going to point some stuff out to the audience as well as you. And then I'm going to play something, and you can poke around here and have some fun with it, okay? I'm really Excellent. You're really good with electronics? I think it's computer. Awesome. <laughs> I like it already. You're doing just fine. So what we're looking at here is uh, where the cello comes through. So when I play the cello, oh, uh, let's try the again. Oh, it's not Oh, the, the volume's off, of course. Okay, yeah, there we go. So, see how this little meter here, see how it responds to how much noise I'm playing, right? Very good. So, um, the audio from my cello is being sent to the computer through this channel, and then it goes through this little processor down here. And what this does is I have specific effects set up for everything. So right now I have just my clean sound. When I click this little speaker, it turns it off, and I can turn this one on, echo. This is just a delay. All right? Now, what I'm going to have you mess around with is my special channel. So I created this just for today. So these right here are power buttons. See how all these things came on as soon as I click this? So all you have to do, you can scroll left and right with two fingers like this. And then anytime there's a name up here, you click that little button and you can turn it on. Okay? And there's all sorts of weird fun things. Okay? So I'm gonna play a little music. Alright. And you have fun with it, okay? So uh, what I'd like to do now, I'm going to play another song, 
And this one is uh, decidedly different than the first. I used a lot more um, electronic elements in this one. Hey, by the way, everybody, can you hear the cello out there while I'm playing, or is it not loud enough? Could be more. Could be a bit louder. We're going to raise it a bit, maybe. OK, great. Um, good. So this next song um, is called Impermanence. I kind of wrote it uh, for a lot of reasons, but uh, I, I find the more I think about it in everyday life, the more it applies. And it's really about how However much we want things to stick around, they usually don't, right? So if you have your, your favorite, uh, like I had a, a cello I really liked many years ago, and uh, <laughs> I was going on stage to play for a state orchestra, and I dropped my folding stand through the cello. Oh. Oh. Okay? And so that was the end of the cello. And so there were two options. I could get really sad and angry and depressed and all sorts of upset about that cello being gone, or I could accept that it was gone and remember that everything, even this building, is impermanent, however unlikely it seems. So the song is called Impermanence. I hope you enjoy. <laughs>
ago Humanity's impact suddenly shows Changes we enact determine and when and everything that we know Awareness leaves you content Holding on leads to regret We so easily forget This world is impermanent Change This world is impermanent And trophy without consent Awareness leaves you content Holding on leads to regret We so easily forget This world
So that's a, a fun little program. That's a lot of variety and spice for live performances. I suggest you check that out. Um, let's see. Um, does anybody have any questions so far? Yes? Um, how do I get these programs? Um, a lot of them you have to buy. The, as I said before, the best program that I've found that's free is called Reaper, R-E-A-P-E-R. -E and it's for Mac and PC. I've suggested it to some of my students that are interested in this. Right? Um, any other questions? Yes, I um, I, no I noticed you had like different sections pre-programmed. It looked like you were using the pedal to advance between them. Yes, yeah. very good. So I'll, I'll explain that a little bit. So I'm going to explain sort of the layout of my um, performance page. Um, and then you know what we'll do? We'll go into an actual song, into one of these songs. So as you can see over here, I've got this master track over here, and it's got all these BPMs. And then over here, there are all these big titles, right? So these are the songs that I'm playing for you, and a lot of them are chopped up into different sections. So what I have on my, um, my uh, controller over here, with my foot controller, I can go up and down. And you see how I'm going up and down on the main screen, and it's highlighting a certain song? So whatever song's on here, I can select with that. And then what I've done is I've broken up the songs into sections where I am in charge of cueing it. So a lot of that has to do with when I want to put my improvisation into a piece. So for example, for that last song we have, the first third of it is just this intro uh, cello only part. Right? So just a bunch of cellos. Kind of thing. The next section is the real meat of the song. It's the first two verses and choruses, and then it goes into the solo section. That sounded like this. Right? Okay. Now the third part of the song, I don't want to constrain myself with how long my solo is. I want to be able to solo as long or as short as possible. So we're going to go into the song in a second, but whenever I decide it's over, I simply just tell this next section to play. Simple as that. Um, I, I could cue every section as I wanted to, but there's real no real point because after the chorus comes the next part, and after the verse comes the chorus, and etc. Did you have another follow-up question? Yeah, I was just wondering. So, like, do you press the pedal to advance just like close to the end of that thing, and then it switches right at the end, or do you have to press it exactly at the right? More, more the second one. So he, he's asking if I have to be very precise in terms of when I press the move ahead pedal, and the answer is yes. What's happening is the, the beats per minute or the BPM of each song is this number over here. And for better or for worse, um, it's set up so that I have one quarter note to hit the go on button. So if I hit it a quarter note too soon, it kind of skips a little bit. And if you knew the song, you'd probably notice it. If you didn't know the song, you might not be aware of it. If I do it too late, however, it goes, it goes back to the loop section that I use for soloing. So that might be a little more obvious. Um, so it's something that I have to practice, yes. Um, but at the same time, it also allows me that flexibility to go on whenever I want. Yes, Can you use any MIDI controllers that specific to Um This is actually usable by almost all digital audio workstations. And let me just show this off, especially for people at home. Um, this is a pretty cool little toy. This is a Keith McMillan soft step. So as you can see, I've just got ten numbers in four directions. You can hook up an expression pedal, which is one of those pedals that goes back and forth like this. This actually has a lot of flexibility. Each number, you can turn it into a toggle on and off. So uh, a great example of that is I can turn certain effects on and off, right? And this is kind of what I use my pedal board for. Right, the pedal effects. I can set it to just do one action. So one is play. Two is stop. It's supposed to be stop. There we go. Um, right, three I can arm record. It won't really do anything right now because nothing's armed. Um, and you can set up to do whatever you want. The other cool thing is it's actually pressure sensitive. So the harder I pressed, I could have that affect something. 
It has an X axis and a Y axis, so if I rolled my foot, I could have that affect things. Um, it's quite versatile. Um, so you can use it with logic, you can use it with uh, reason, uh, you can use it with um, tar rig. There's a lot, it has a lot of versatility. Um, so, um, but Victoria brought up a, a great word, MIDI. Does anybody know what MIDI means? Yeah. Sure. It's also an abbreviation. Do you know what the letters stand for? No. All right, you're going to learn. Anybody else got a guess? Sure. Musical Instrument Digital Interface. It's kind of awkward. Musical Instrument Digital Interface. But um, if I had, say, a mini cello, my cello would not only send out audio information, but those ones and zeros I was talking about earlier. So if I had a mini cello, it would send out ones and zeros, which the computer would read and can turn into any sound that I have the capability of producing on this computer. Since, since it's simply digital information, I can edit it exactly how I want. So I'm actually going to go into uh, one of the songs, and I can show you um, some of the stuff I've been doing here. Yeah, sure. So. Um, so one thing I wanted to do with these pieces is, especially because I'm a cellist, I wanted to do sounds with the cello that weren't normally possible in a live setting. So one of those loads, ah, here we go. I'm going to show you some stuff I did to kind of get some weird sounds that you may or may not have noticed in this last piece. So um, in the beginning, we have that nice little cello intro, right? Let's just listen. So what I did is, I went in here, and let me just blow these up a little bit so you can see them a little better. So I took those pizzicato cello parts, and like that stutter program I was showing you, I chopped them up into little bite-sized pieces. There we go. See how there are a bunch of little files? They just kind of start and stop abruptly. So if I would play just this for you, let me make sure. Right? So all I did there was I took the pizzicato from earlier and I quantized it. Everybody remember that word? Because I need to say it? Yeah? Okay. So I quantized it. I sped it up to the new tempo of the chorus. Right? But you're probably hearing that one. Here, this is a little bit better. There we go. Just the pizzicato, right? So what I then did is I lined it up with this other one, and they're about a sixteenth beat off. Oh, it's not so good. There we go. Can you hear that? There. Off one. Cool. Then what I did is I threw this thing called a gate on it. And a gate simply means if the sound is above a certain level, the sound comes out of the speaker. If it's below that level, it doesn't come out of the speaker. That's all it is. So it's very similar to what we just heard. Well, almost. Hear how it's cutting off the sound at a certain point? All right. And then I was like, well, that's still too normal. I got to do something really weird to it. So I added this weird fuzzy element called a frequency shifter. And that ends up with this. So now we listen to that with everything else going on. Records do nowadays is 
they'll take somebody singing and they'll double or triple it or add harmonies. And so whenever I'm singing up here, I promise I'm singing, but I also use recorded harmonies to make my voice really fat and full sounding in a live performance. Um, and it gives it sort of a different um, take. Um, cool. Well, we have about a little less than 10 minutes. I'm going to ask if there are any more questions. Yes. Um, the answer to that is nearly limitless. Um, the really exciting, fun thing about this rig is that it's only limited by your imagination um, and understanding the hardware you're working with. So really, the more I use this to create music, the more I find that I can do in terms of manipulating and, and changing the sound um, as I go on. But excellent question. Yes? So when you compose music, Huh? Do you use different processes for composing music? Like, do you ever use a pencil and paper, or sit down at a piano, or sit down at a cello, and then sit down at a computer? Yeah, that's an excellent question. This is this is a great uh, one for this song. So, great. What happened here? One second. Oh, that's why. Ah, there we go. Okay, great. So the first thing I sort of came up with for the song was a chord progression on cello. And usually you hear a chord's voice from the root, right? Like an F minor chord would be like this. Right? So I was kind of messing around with like a three note voice like that. And then I kind of decided, well, I like having that D flat in there. I like that sound. And then I went from this chord, I went to this chord. And then I just repeated that again, down the whole step. Right? So that chord progression was the first thing that I kind of came up with. I was like, yeah, it sounds cool. And I was about it. And I let it sit and simmer for a while. And, um, I started working on this project, and I was like, I really want to use that in a song. So I, I came up with my chord structure. And I didn't really have, uh, I didn't have lyrics other than I knew the song was going to be called Impermanent. So I, I would just be like walking around the day going like, And I literally just, that's kind of all it was. So the pencil and paper part came when I was writing the lyrics. And um, for me, being a lyricist is about being a poet. And obviously we all learn some of that stuff in school when we take English classes. But for me, it's, it's one of the harder elements because I feel like the lyrics are very important. Um, especially because in this project, I really want the lyrics to help tell what I'm improvising about. So, if, for example, this song on permanence, I hoped, uh, or I expressed my, through my improvisation, the same meaning as the lyrics do. So, I had the chords, I set some lyrics to it, and then I sort of, um, piece by piece came up with the structure of the rest of the song. Um, since I'm a bass player, something that I like to do a lot is I'll just throw down like a very, very simple rhythm part, nothing as complex as the drums, and lay down the roots and what bass line sounds good. And then after that, I'll slowly add on elements as I hear them. Um, for example, that first piece had guitar. This piece doesn't have guitar, it had guitar fit, but there's a lot more electronic keyboards as opposed to more acoustic sound in the last song. Um, it really kind of varies every time, but usually that spark for inspiration for a song will come from anywhere, anywhere, on any instrument. And that's um, one of the best things about composing. Um, you can compose for an instrument. I've written songs specifically for solo cello, but with this, any sort of musical idea that comes from any instrument, I can kind of incorporate and build. So, great question. Yes? Yeah, an effort to keep things light and easy. Uh -huh. First, I want to know what you make the, the board is your pedal board, but yes. um, I have a use I do a lot of solo work, and I use a music stand with my iPad. Mm -hmm. So my question is, can I incorporate this into utilizing an iPad so that it's a little bit meaner and meaner for me? Number one, Keith McMillan. So Keith, 
K-E-I-T-H, McMillan, M-C, M-I-L-L-E-N. This is the Keith McMillan soft step. Um, so when you use an iPad, it's really cool because there are a ton of programs out there, especially for iPad, that allow you to literally hook up any instrument with a jack like this, and this is just a quarter inch jack, just like a guitar students. And you can hook that into your iPad, have all sorts of effects processes on there, all sorts of cool stuff. Um, so the answer is yes, you can use your iPad. Um, I know that there's something called the iRig, and it's meant for guitarists, but come on, we're string players, that counts. Mm -hmm. Totally better than guitarists. Don't tell the guitarists I say that. Um, so, um, yes, I, I, you can totally do that. There's a lot of programs available. Just search through the app store, um, you know, uh, if you have an iPad, and see what's there. Um, I have a fun little thing for my phone that just makes these weird synthetic noises. It's like two bucks. It's really fun to just mess around and get inspired by whatever sound comes out of it. So. It's I R I G I rig. Uh, I think it's just I, letter like in the letter I rig, like iPad I R I G. Anything else? Yes. Do you, uh, even though you don't need to with this, do you sometimes still do live loops as part of the performance? I haven't messed around with that as much on here. This has a looper, the option. I can use loops. Um, uh, I will use a looper when I think the audience needs to hear every part constructed in front of me. And that's part of why I don't use a looper. Um, I don't think you guys need to sit here while I play you that whole cello set up in the beginning, and then actually play my own line. I'd rather just, here's the acoustic cellos, and here's the thing. Okay, great. And now we can move on to the next part. Cool. Um, I'm actually going to play one more quick tune. Please stick around and have me answer more questions afterwards. Um, and okay, you can find me at many places on the interwebs. Um, my project is called By Yourself, B-Y-E-R-S-E-L-F, By Yourself. Uh, and uh, you can find this music on my Bandcamp site, so buyyourself.bandcamp.com. Um, you can also find out more about me and what I do and all the other crazy things I'm involved in at cellobreg.com. Uh, and both of those are Twitter handles, so you can go to buy yourself on Twitter and buy yourself, or sorry, cellobreg on Twitter as well. Um, thank you guys so much for hanging around. Got one more short one for you here. This should be fun. Uh, so yeah, enjoy. You're an outcast, dead last, self sex, no class, but your heart's full of golden dreams. Watch you walk by, you're too shy to say why you're so high. Just say you may be crazy like I 
some more additional resources, you can also go to the ChristianHouse.com homepage. So we're going to let all the kids today go home. Are you guys having a good time, kids? Yeah. All right. And we'll see yeah. you all tomorrow. We'll see everybody else on the stream tonight at 7 o'clock. We've got another hangout on here. Thanks again to Greg Bob Byers.